Hello and welcome to September's newsletter. And I've got a feeling I might have missed out on doing a newsletter in August. And that's what I really wanted to talk about. One of the, the phrases that I used just at the end of August was the wheel came off the bus. And so what that meant for me was that there were just too many things going on, spinning too many plates, can sort of become sort of really derailed almost and didn't get anywhere fast. So you can imagine that whole process of wheel coming off the bus. And I suppose that was really what August was about. It was a really emotional month. It was a month where I suppose for myself, I had to dig in deep and really confront some of those things that I thought I had dealt with in the past. But actually, like everyone else, they were in the two hard baskets. So therefore, it was lying in wait, if you like, for it to sort of emerge. And that was really derailing. It was confronting on some level. And I think we all get to stages where our fears or our old emotions that we do put to the back of our mind or in the too hard basket, it will always catch up. Sooner or later, it will always catch up. And so, so for me, it really was like the wheel came off the bus. I was having to stand quite still and having to really face some of that emotional baggage as is confronting as it was so that I then I sort of reset, I sort of reset. And it's not until you get through that process where I remember sort of saying to my husband, Michael, oh, I just think the wheel was off the bus for a while there. And I didn't know what I was doing or where I was going or what was the best route. I couldn't make decisions. And then suddenly it's just like, bang, wow, that sense of clarity, that sense of knowing, ah, so if I stop pushing water up over here, I can actually start doing stuff over there. And I think August, July and August were particularly hard months. I know from the feedback from my clients, the feedback in terms of my newsletter, I always love hearing from you guys because you're always so honest. Um, and I really enjoy that honesty because, you know, I'm being really honest with you. And um, so, yeah, the wheel is back on the bus. So what does that mean for me? What was it that came up that I had to deal with? So there was lots of things that came up. Um, notably, notably, my grief for the loss of Nikki who was one of our beautiful teachers and um, her life was cut short in the most cruelest of ways. And I don't need to go into detail there. But she's a young, beautiful, vibrant woman. And when that whole episode occurred, when her death occurred, you know, I do what I normally do and I go into action mode. I go into, right, who can I help? So supporting the teachers of the Phoenix Light Academy, dealing with the press and, and everything that that brought up in me, um, having dealt with press before. Uh, when it comes to tragic circumstances, they, they can be very invasive. And actually my anger and resentment towards the press, because it was through them, this poor woman had just you know lost her life. And here was a journalist on the phone telling me, had you know did I know that our beautiful Nikki had passed away and that wasn't the greatest of things for me so I had all that anger and resentment towards them to deal with I know they've got a job but that was there then dealing with her beautiful partner dealing with the students who knew her so it's dealing and dealing and dealing and dealing and you know, obviously what occurred in terms of the court case, etc. It's only now that the dust had settled, just in the sentencing of that man in May. So I have to say in July and August, I was then confronted by my own grief and my own sense of shock about what had happened to her. And I think that's how grief works, isn't it? We, we go into action mode, we support whoever we can, 
and then then that time opens up. So that was a big thing for me, uh, dealing with her her sense of loss and and just the beautifulness of who she was as a person. I'm sure she is an amazing angel, uh, doing what it is that she does up there, and supporting her family um, as they adjust to to life without Nikki, and as we adjust to life without Nikki. So that was a big thing. The the wheel on the bus definitely came off on that one. Very confronting, and grief can be very confronting, and there is no set pattern. I know that's my normal mode. I tend to go into action and then the grief process comes in later. So that's definitely uh, my thing. And then some old, old, old stuff that came up in terms of family ties and uh, your the dogma that you get from your family, those belief systems, they just lie within you. And I felt very liberated. I felt very liberated. Um, booked my, I do actually give myself healings and I do uh, go to people for healings. So big thumbs up to Jackie, who does all my chiropractic, kinesiology and, and natu- naturopath stuff that she just sprays all over and just lie there and take that in so that's my monthly treat but I actually booked myself in for a theta session which really was what I really wanted and it needed I suppose and it was all that's confronting of how I do tend to give myself out there I tend to sort of serve other people's needs first without actually serving my own needs first so worked on all of that and and that was really lovely actually um to reconnect to uh, my theatre teacher Yvonne and and just to get a good old reading out so the two hard basket became emptier and emptier and emptier um and to Anna as well who had on the theatre side as well so you know taking care of yourself and prioritizing yourself it just has given me yeah at the end of August I just recognized myself and and that's probably a very strange thing to say but I recognized who I was and suddenly here I am into September and I feel so familiar um you know I've got a, a diary of uh, workshops out there, both physical workshops and online workshops, which is my norm. We've got Energize, which is norming the on site massage business that we have. We've got our students in the online academy who are just participating in the live webinars, participating in their own self education with students enrolling on a monthly basis. And I suddenly feel that I can actually give myself permission to prioritize, prioritize what is important rather than spinning lots and lots of plates and none of it actually getting there. So I have come into September feeling, oh, okay, okay. I can create my urgent and important list. I can keep building my team. So I've got wonderful new member of the team for the Phoenix Light Foundation and Energize, uh, Mike, and he's helping with all the dig- all that sort of technical um, data stuff that, that I don't have the expertise for. But we've now, the projects are actually getting completed. So my newsletter is consolidation in action. The wheel was off the bus. I couldn't make decisions, guys, and I couldn't see a way through, and I felt confused. I didn't feel like myself. Discombobulated is a wonderful word, and that's really where I was, and you don't understand how much you are disconnected or discombobulated until you come out of it. So now that I'm out, my theme between now and between Christmas is completer finisher. Completer finisher, all the projects, all those spinning plates. I've just taken all the plates off and none of them are spinning and I'm looking at one task at a time. And so for for myself, it is uh, the brand new logo and design for Energize. Uh, NZ, 
big thank you to Sean, Wellness Workplace or Workness Wellness Solutions. That's our new logo because that's what we want to bring into the workplace. Wellness solutions. Make sure that staff are feeling amazing. Staff are feeling energized. Staff are, are feeling great after our, our beautiful massage therapists have been in there. The business bubble is uh, going to be finished by the end of September. It's a new concept that will be out there. I've got my Oracle card deck up. That's the next thing that will come in and will get completed and finished. Consolidation in action. I am just taking one task at a time. And through doing that, that sense of achievement is actually really awesome. I am well and truly on track now. All the wheels are spinning at the same time. I'm going in the same direction. I'm creating consolidation and action and completion. Completer, finisher. That is my big theme, my big theme for the end of the year. Because I want 2020, I want to be prepared for that, regardless of what's happening out there in the world you know, whether it is a global recession, I know we've got a recession here in New Zealand, you know, the UK is, wow, it's a bag of tricks. Nobody knows what that what is happening there. And, and I look at Mr. BJ and I think, wow, you know, have they actually invited Guy Fox in to their midst? We talk about Trump being the emperor with no clue. And then we've got Boris Johnson. Is he the modern day version of Guy Fox? Because, man, he's setting off fireworks all over the place. Um, and bringing down the government is just quite extraordinary. So completing and finishing my tasks, my projects, just looking at one at a time, giving myself permission, giving myself permission to go, do you know what? I don't need to look at all of those. I just need to finish this one first. And then chung like a Pez dispenser, the next one comes up and the next one, but they're not all going at the same time. And, and for me, that realization has been just wonderful. Students are booking in for my courses now because I've given myself permission to be that person again. And finding myself, finding myself has just been the most extraordinary feeling this month. I can't describe it any more than that, than, than a sense of excitement and a sense of identity and a sense of self-actualization. So September time, as much as we've got these big super moons coming in, um, I think that the power of the moon and the energy that you should be having that spring in our step, especially for us down here in the southern uh, hemisphere, you are coming into our spring. We've got that spring in our step. I know in New Zealand, everybody is just like the summer's already here, even though the clocks haven't fall, um, sort of bounced forward yet. But we're all feeling the joy of that spring, seeing the colour seeing a different skylight, seeing our, our beautiful flowers blossoming. And I think consolidation in action, for those of you who've maybe had a July, June, July and August, or a July and August where, yeah, it's just been a little bit difficult. You've not felt quite like yourself. You felt like you've been hijacked by other people's wants and other people's needs or events in your life that have occurred, then giving yourself a break, giving yourself permission to go, actually, let me just do this first and then I'll be there. I think you'll probably find that if your, your wheel has fallen off the bus, then you're quite quickly put it back on again. So it's been a really interesting, interesting time. I think also self-care and self-nurture from my theatre session, I knew it would be a big one. I knew it would be a deep one. And I, I sort of said that to uh, my networking group, actually, because I was so excited that I was going to be having um, a theatre session. And I think the following week, which turned into a really emotional week for me, and in the confronting aspect of dealing with Nikki and 
and that bottled up grief, giving myself permission to to cry for her loss. Um, I think I think in giving myself permission and giving myself permission to say no again has been really liberating. Um, and I I feel that sometimes, although people reach out and they are looking for help, I'm not always the right person. And I'm always the first person to say that to people. When you will come in the book a session with me, if I'm not the right person, I'll put my hand up and say, actually, I'm not the right person. You need to go and see someone else. You need to see someone with this particular kind of skills. And so being really honest with yourself, you don't have to lay yourself open to constantly be there for everyone and and everybody. You just need to be there for those that you can help and you can say no to those that you can't help. And that is quite liberating in itself. And I think for some of my clients, that's been quite a slow realization using discernment, using our own emotional triggers or our own emotional barometer um, can be so easily overridden by that logical mind or that need to please people all of the time. So using your discernment and pulling your energy back to self, making sure that you prioritise yourself on some levels um, can be very, very exciting. So for me, my big thing is I've gone back to art classes. And art's always been a big thing for me. It's the only subject that I passed when I was at high school, mainly because I was in love with my, uh, I had a huge crush on my art teacher, Mr. Constable, John Constable. So for those UK Brits, you'll get the pun in there. Uh, So John Constable was his name and he used to bring his cat into class he didn't want to leave the kitten at home so this kitten would be uh, dipping its paws in your paint and tromping all over your exam pieces uh, which was extremely frustrating <laughs> for all of us beautiful cat still remember its name Toka Haska was its name and um, and so it was the only thing that I excelled in I excelled in. I'm, I'm a good copy artist I'm not an abstract person and I don't have a fabulous imagination but yeah, you could put a bunch of flowers in front of me and I can copy that, no problem. So, um, so back to my art classes, investing in some real meditative time. I've taken a painting that I did about four years ago. It might even be five years ago, but probably four years ago. And it's, I went on a course called My Inner Muse with a lovely lady called Rosie and, um, and painted this face uh, with no eyes, nose, or and just a vague outline for lips, no real facial definitions. And then when I came into this year, the painting came to me in a dream, and it said, well, it's time to put your eyes on, it's time to, you know, recognise who you are as your own inner muse, to look at this painting in your inner muse. And so I'm at the stage where the eyes are on and we're looking at skin tone and creating different colours, learning how to create different colours of skin tone on the palette. Um, And on Saturday, working with Leanne at um, Art and Soul uh, here in Christchurch, beautiful, beautiful art studio and gallery. Um, we were just talking about the different shades. We put the base foundation on it. She does look like she's got American tan foundation on. But then it's about the layering and the blending and the light and the dark and the shadow and the contrast. And I had a really lovely, lovely session with Leanne on Saturday. And it wasn't until afterwards really reflecting on the lesson, I said, you know, but isn't that what life's all about? We have our faces are out there, you know, here in this YouTube video and Instagram or photographs or people seeing you on a day-to-day basis. But it's that light and shade. It's the depth of shading in our lives. It's the depth of shading of our experiences that come forward through our expression and through our faces. And so I just happened to text my musings 
Julianne, and she's actually, you've got a point there. You know, what you're doing is finding the depth, your new depth. So it'll probably take me all year. She does want to have an exhibition of the student's work <laughs> at the end of the year, which, you know, I don't know if mine will be ready by then, but um, it's, it's a real experience. And that's me investing in myself, investing in giving myself that time out and making sure that the wheel stays on the bus again, creating time, not panicking about not being working all of the time. You need that downtime. So it's been a really interesting journey. It's been a really interesting two months. It's been an emotional roller coaster for lots of people. And maybe like myself, unbeknownst to yourself, the wheel was off the bus. But hopefully, if you can consolidate, if you can give yourself permission just to say no, give yourself permission not to spin all of the plates, give yourself no, that permission to say no, you don't have to accept every job that lands on your plate, you don't have to take everything and not create space for yourself, then hopefully, like myself, you'll be investing in what is feeding your soul. And for me, going to um, uh, Art and Soul here down in Waltham with Leanne is just wonderful. It's just a wonderful, wonderful space for me to be in. Meeting lovely women and men, all finding themselves through their artwork and discovering talents and learning new talents. So yeah, stop spinning your plates. Consolidate what you can. Give yourself those measurable deadlines and actually feel like you are completing your tasks rather than them being ongoing all of the time. Otherwise, you begin to feel like a failure. And I have to say those were the words I used in July and August. August in particular, I have to say, I felt like I'd really failed on lots of different things or failed in terms of supporting people, failed and let people down, you know, and that's very confronting as well. Wow. As I talk about it, it's just been a massive, a massive journey over this last couple of months. But I'm taking a breath and I'm creating a new inner vision, which will be externally expressed on this painting on all the different depths and creating bite size, bite size projects so that I can feel that success. And, you know, launching the new colors, company colors, and, and the new logo for Energize NZ. Very exciting. The website should be up and running next week with the new company colours. Um, yeah, it's it's exciting. It's exciting. So that's where I want to be all of the time, feeling that I'm a completer finisher. And I'm only going to change that by consolidation and not distraction. So I don't know if that'll make sense to you guys. Hopefully it will. It usually does. I usually push a few buttons for people. And um, I, say I really love, I love that feedback that comes back. But, you know, I can't help but smile because I'm actually really enjoying the energy of September right now. Really, really enjoying it. And that's just wonderful. So what do we have in September? taking a break with my hubby in September. So we're just having a holiday here in New Zealand and that's going to be good. And then getting ready, preparing for the launch of my live web classes. So we've got um, Tarot for Beginners coming up in October. Mindful manifesting, I'm going to do that as a live web class, really because if consolidation and action is a thing for you in September, then as we come into 2020, maybe now is the time to actually start to break some of those old habits, uh, find some new ones, create a new way of thinking, uh, discover who you are personality-wise. Are you a lazy lazy about? Are you a rescuer? 
Um, who are you? Who are you? So that's a really lovely course. So that this will be the first time as an online class. Very excited about that. And then bringing in the angels as we come up to Christmas. I love angel classes before Christmas. I always think the angels are closest to us because they're everywhere. Even in the southern hemisphere where Christmas lights are not really huge because you know, we've got daylight till 11 o'clock. But angels are everywhere. They're everywhere on our Christmas cards, our Christmas trees, Christmas decks, Christmas candles. They're just everywhere. Churches, just everywhere. So we've got an angelic soul connection, which is uncovering me. And that can be very confronting. The, the pupils that have been on this course before have found it very confronting, very revealing and exceptionally healing. So we uncover ourselves in the first half of the course and then we reinvent who we want to be. So lots of, with the mindful manifesting and the angelic soul connection, we're preparing for 2020. We're preparing for that new year. And we've got a wand making class, physical class, wand making class. So always a great time to create a healing tool for yourself. It would be great to see you on there. I provide all of the tools, all of the craft stuff. It's just a great vibe. It's a great vibe. And people start off with an idea, then we go into meditation and it completely changes. And then they come back with a new idea. And then they create this amazing healing tool, meditation tool, manifesting tool, wellness tool. Wow, there's been heaps of different tools that have been made, chakra balancing tool, and then we learn how to use them at the end. So a great physical class coming up, and then we'll work on the new physical classes for um, 2020. So yeah, definitely feel I'm back, not only with the wheels back on the bus, but I'm in the driving seat. And I hope that's the same for you. I hope that's the same for you. So as always, the newsletter has uh, all of the course dates and information. Um, please feel free to share this video. Uh, it's always lovely to hear from new people. It's always great to hear from everyone who's a normal part of what it is that we do. And hopefully by the end of the year, I might be sharing. We might have my beautiful new inner self at the back of the, the, the wall here. Um, when I'm doing my live streaming, you never know, you might be seeing a doppelganger. Um, I don't know, we'll just have to wait and see. But until the next time, I want you to take care. I want you to be good to yourself and be kind and hope to see you in one of our classes, be it like this, live on, on the online platforms or in the physical class. It'd be great to see you um, making and creating the most wonderful tool. So until the next time, you take care and um, be good to yourself. Bye for now.